The CNMI's phone and data service were knocked out when the lone undersea fiber optic cable owned by incumbent local exchange carrier IT&E was damaged by a storm and the company's microwave backup also happened to be down. Apparently fearing a repeat, both the CNMI House and Senate have passed resolutions calling on the Governor Eloy Eno's administration to help Docomo with its plans for a new cable. Company president and CEO Jonathan Kriegel. Uh, they have uh, sought uh, alternative solutions for the people of the CNMI. Um, and so there are three types of permits that one needs uh, for a project of this kind. You need local permits in the CNMI, local permits in Guam, and then there are federal agency permits. Uh, and so having this kind of support from one of the three uh, key areas um, uh, as, a, as a place to start, um, it's great encouragement uh, for Docomo Pacific. Kriegel says while the damaged cable underscores the need for backup, Docomo also estimates that the IT&E cable only has about five years of operational life left, so a new cable is inevitable. Kriegel says a new cable will also mean better services and prices for customers. So having access to a second cable, um, which provides redundancy uh, for both of the communities, and will also then provide more bandwidth, um, and if there's an increase in bandwidth, uh, there should, uh, that should result in lower uh, prices uh, for consumers and for businesses in both markets. Kriegel says much work still needs to be done, including finding potential partners, but he believes there is enough untapped demand in the CNMI that warrants investing in a new cable. A project of this size that, that covers uh, Saipan, uh, Tinian, and Rota, and then also lands on Guam, uh, that's, a, that's an eight-digit number. Um, uh, by the time it's all said and done. And just how large is, uh, it's, it's hard to say until we actually get final bids. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Uh, so the government uh, of the CNMI.